Holly, are you just going to do the video or am I going to, um, you going to let me do it? You can do it. It's okay. It'd be easier if you could start doing maybe, maybe some of the editing at least. Welcome to HeartTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the uh, 2020 uh, propagation series that I've been doing for the uh, last couple of months, just showing the uh, process that I was using to uh, this, this year uh, for propagation. Uh, I've got uh, several years of propagation videos on my channel and I've used a different technique in every one of those uh, uh, series. If you wanna go back and find a simpler or less expensive uh, technique to use or more, maybe more expensive um, uh, technique to use. This year I've been using this electronic leaf which basically just simulates the uh, moisture on the leaf of a plant when, the, uh, when it comes up, the water comes on like that, and then the weight of the uh, water drops that uh, leaf, uh, metal leaf back down and turns the water off. Works great. Um, I needed a system here. I'm, I do some traveling, and I need a system where I can stick these cuttings and uh, walk away for three or four days, which I just did um, this week, and I didn't have any problem whatsoever, you know, making, you know, the, with the, with the reliability of this system. And so that was the main thing I was going for this, uh, this propagation season was to make sure I had a system at this new house where I could travel and still root cuttings uh, while I'm gone. This will be the last video in this series um, for this season, other than I will put up a, uh, a video of framing this uh, greenhouse in, which uh, will help um, winterize the few things that I have rooted here. I'm gonna get several questions about uh, winter rising. It's raining right this minute while I'm, while I'm doing this video and there's a shade cloth above my head so the water's just dripping, just dripping on me. Um, but the, it's a greenhouse. You're, you're gonna get wet in a greenhouse so it's no, no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna get several questions. Uh, number one, should I pot them all up? Um, every, pretty much everything here uh, is rooted and uh, I don't pot things up uh, at this point uh, unless I unless I had a heated space that was big enough for the newly potted things. The, the real issue is, is this, this tray right here has 50 cells and probably there's 40 plants rooted in that, in that tray. Right now that tray is only 12 inches wide and 18 inches long. If I was to pot all those plants up into like four inch containers, all of a sudden it's gonna take up you know, this much space. And I, I'm now having to winterize a much larger space. And so that's why I don't do it um, maybe in a nursery setting where I was prepared for the um, for these things to expand in space and I had a, a, a place where I could keep them from freezing in the winter I would just much easier to winterize them uh, when they're this compact and so that's the reason uh, that I don't uh, pot them up uh, one thing that you can do in this situation is I potted up several things so there's empty cells in a lot of these they could be consolidated down even further I, I could go from Right now I have five trays. I could go down to probably three trays of the things that are actually rooted or, or actually left in the trays. And that would allow me to uh, winterize them a little easier. Most of these things would like a little bit of uh, winter temperatures, um, but not be frozen solid. And so I want, them, I want them exposed to some cold. This is the other question I'm, I'm gonna have is how am I gonna winter protect them? For the most part, I'm in zone 7B in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's not gonna get that cold. If I had this thing closed in, and I threw a cover over this inside of here, most everything would be fine uh, through the winter time unless I had extreme temperatures, at which point I'm just not gonna play around with that. I don't have enough here uh, that I wouldn't just pick, the, pick three or four trays up and move them into the house overnight, put a towel down on the kitchen floor and just put them, put them there overnight or, or two or three nights or whatever amount of time it takes for the temperature to moderate a little bit. But for the most part, if it's just in the mid to upper 20s outside at night, I can keep it in here at 32, 33 degrees, down here on the floor, especially on the ground, the ground's not gonna freeze. Uh, but once this is closed in, and I'll do that in the next few weeks uh, before I get any extreme cold, uh, a simple uh, blanket uh, over the top of them. It could be a sheet, uh, it could be a frost protection blanket that you buy on Amazon, doesn't really matter. Uh, in my old greenhouse, uh, where I had a large greenhouse where it really warmed up quite a bit, during the day, I just did no protection whatsoever. It just, it, it got cold enough at night that it could almost freeze things, but down at the floor level, it warmed up so much during the day, it wasn't a problem. Those of you in colder areas, if you're in zone five or something like that, you're gonna need a heated space for your uh, unplanted uh, rooted cuttings. Cause these cells, you know, they're, they're, they're tiny. They're only an inch, inch and a half wide. 
and these plants are definitely vulnerable to cold. But in my area, on the ground like this, simple cover in a closed space uh, is not going to not going to be an issue really, except for a few nights. Again, I'll bring them inside. So let me give you a close up of well, you know what's rooted in here. The camellias are finally rooted, and I also you know very excitingly sold some of the things in the front yard, and I'll show you that real quick. I showed this in the last video that I've had a squirrel in here uh, messing around with these things uh, because I don't have this uh, greenhouse enclosed. That'll kind of take care of itself once I get it enclosed. My oak leaf hydrangeas over here have rooted very, very well and uh, new growth actually coming on them. Um, the, uh, uh, everything in this tray had already rooted. The uh, uh, co Confederate jasmine right there is rooted. The uh, uh, gardenias have rooted uh, very well. You can see super, super nice roots uh, on those. All of the viburnum uh, in this tray have rooted. Here's one that I pulled out a few minutes ago that I know Looks just beautiful. That's a David uh, viburnum right there. So this system works. It's just super, super simple. I mean, it's just an let you know, that thing's weighted down by the rain right this second. So, you know, but if it dried out, it'd pop up, water'd come on. It's just a super, super simple system. Uh, the, uh, so all of my uh, viburnum varieties, there's viburnum nudum right here. Let me pull that one. I'll pull that one out just so we can look at it as well. Right there. The one plant that we don't want to disturb are these camellias. I'm just going to tell you, they are rooted, and they're actually rooted pretty well, better than I actually thought. I thought that that would actually tug out of there, but I'm not going to mess with my uh, camellias. Um, I'm su super excited about that. I, I didn't know if I had done them too late, uh, actually. This is the rest of my uh, perennials and annuals that I'm saving through the uh, winter. I will be a little more guarded with something like these coleus. I don't want those to freeze. so. I'm probably going to consolidate one flat down that is stuff that I know will be super temperamental to the cold. Uh, this hibiscus right here, uh, the coleus right there, and those I'll just bring in more frequently. This flat right here struggled um, because uh, I, I just I mishandled these for a couple days before I shot that video, but even abused uh, the system right here. There's a leaf that just fell off of it, but it's rooted. Uh, so even even these really kind of terrible looking uh, uh, Sistrum cuttings that I did in the uh, last video in the uh, uh, Osmanthus fragrance that I did right there um, They're rooted and so uh, excited about that see sometimes even you know even things can go wrong and uh, they're, they're, They'll still root okay. All it did was the defoliated pretty quickly because I didn't get them in here quick enough I left them in the bag about 48 hours actually before I, uh, I got around to shooting that video. Let me show you in the front yard real quick what I sold. So there's the road uh, right there and I just had these uh, three trays sitting right here and I listed the plants on my uh, neighborhood Facebook page. I didn't put them on Facebook Marketplace so the whole world would show up but my neighborhood uh, Facebook page is pretty big and uh, I've sold 12 pieces so far. They were just listed uh, last Saturday uh, on the neighborhood Facebook uh, page. And then I left town Sunday through Wednesday. And while I was gone, uh, 12 uh, pots sold. And I just sold them for $2 a piece. You can get more than that, obviously, if they were uh, bigger or more mature uh, in the spring. But I just kind of showing you guys that within, you know, six weeks of having stuck these cuttings, uh, I had them and, you know, I was able to pot them up into four inch pots. And so the Verbena uh, bonitsieris and the regular, the Homestead Purple Verbena and the uh, Lantana and uh, the Salvia uh, right here. Uh, 12 pieces were picked out at $24 in my mailbox uh, when I got back home uh, from my trip. And I expect, you know, a few more people will uh, trickle in here and buy a few more of these pieces. One quick thing to point out, uh, this is a frost protection blanket right here. I have it on my broccoli and it's just to protect it from the cabbage moths. Uh, laying their uh, uh, eggs on it and, and eating up my broccoli, but that's what a frost protection blanket looks like. It's good for about a half a zone. Uh, so, you know, every horticultural zone jumps 10 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so this is good for about five degrees Fahrenheit. If you got one that was big enough to double up, you know, you might, you, you get a full zone out of it. A sheet is probably equal to a full zone. So, you know, if it's 25 out you can if, if something's weighed it down at the ground like that you should be able to keep it around 35 uh, right down right down by the ground level 
So anything down to about 25 degrees, you know, I'll put a, uh, you know, put that frost protection blanket in here. Having this enclosed uh, during the day uh, will we'll heat it up. Any kind of plastic dome over the top of it would heat it up during the day. Gets lower than 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, definitely we're going to up the protection, and that could be bringing some sort of little mobile heater uh, out to this space that is moisture resistant. You can get one uh, from probably from a greenhouse supplier uh, that can actually sit in a greenhouse and be okay. Be careful with that. You know, just bringing out some sort of electric heater from the inside. That's you know, it's the moisture. It's going to be moisture in this space uh, anytime, any time of the year. Uh, and beyond that, just take them inside. They don't take up a lot of space. Just put a towel down on the floor in the kitchen and, uh, and that'll be that. So thank you very much for following along uh, with this uh, series. Um, it's not been my best uh, propagation series just because I started so late in the season and uh, most of the things had just kind of stopped growing or hardened off uh, so much, but I got a great system in place. And so next spring I'll get started early and, uh, and as I travel around, uh, I'll collect cuttings uh, throughout the season, the, throughout the entire season next year, and uh, we'll root lots of things together. Thanks for watching.